good morning this is the fifth video on the subject of creative nonfiction voices from the margin course code 561 a subject taught in MA English second semester at Tribun University Kathmandu Nepal these videos are primarily made for my students for them to watch before they come to my class and come to my class with an understanding of the text so that they can better participate in the class but they may be useful to anyone interested in such stuff okay so in the previous video I mistakenly said that I read up to paragraph 19 there was a mistake in labeling the paragraph numbers actually I read from paragraph 6 to 20 and the focus in those paragraphs was food vocabulary and sports vocabulary and the writer we saw he how he creates his mother's history he remembers how when he was in class 5 once his mother helped him to learn basketball and reading becomes difficult in these paragraphs because of this specialized vocabulary and there is also process writing uh, uh, he remembers how his mother cooked the kalbi the Korean dish and he, he minutely describes the whole process of making kalbi in detail now I'll read from paragraph 20 here I go it puzzled me how much she considered her own history to be immaterial and if she never patently diminished herself she was able to finesse a kind of self removal by speaking of my father whenever she could she jealously recounted his excellence as a student in medical school and reminded me each night before i started my work of how hard he drove himself in his work to make a life for us she said that because of his asian face and imperfect english he was working two times the american doctors i knew that she was building him up buttressing him with both genuine admiration and her own brand of anxious braggadocio and that her overarching concern was that i might fail to see him as he wished me to in the most dawning light his pose is steadfast and solitary so uh, you need to check vocabulary I, I guess you are not able to understand a lot of words uh, it's good because you have challenging vocabulary you check meanings and make notes of words as I read this line I remember my own family my son is in America my daughter-in-law is in America they are studying the engineering they they want to be scientists in future and as I read that he being a doctor he was discriminated because he was Asian now I get worried about my own children if they will be discriminated even when they become a scientist in America look how we relate what we read with our life so up to here I had read in the previous paragraph up to paragraph 20 now I'll begin from paragraph 21 I mistakenly said it's paragraph 19 it's actually paragraph 20 now I begin from paragraph 21 in the year before I left for extra when did he leave where well, extra is the school which he attended so when did he leave extra when he was 15 he went to school when he was 15 maybe it's maybe by school we don't mean high school maybe it's oh, beyond that in the year before I left for extra I became weary of her oft repeated accounts of my father's success look the mother always talked about the father's success to her son why because she wanted to tell him indirectly you must be as successful or even more successful than your father so do you see what do you see here how parents put a pressure on the children to succeed in life and how this creates worry I became weary to avoid <laughs> you became care careful I became weary of her oft repeated accounts of my father's success I was a teenager 
So we can say, uh, oh, he was 15. I was a teenager. And so ever inclined to be dismissive and bitter towards anything that had to do with the family and home. This is remarkable. He says that, I was a teenager and I would dismiss anything that belonged to family and home. This is an important point here because now at an older age, maybe plus 25, he comes home again and maybe his mother is dead. And he's recalling when his mother was alive. And then he realizes that the behavior I displayed when I was a teenager was actually wrong. Because at that time, I would dismiss anything that had to do with family and home. Teenagers are like that, you know. They're revolting and they have their own world. So I, I became weary of her often, repeated account of my father. So sometimes I feel that by writing this essay, the writer is paying a homage to his mother and the writer is begging a pardon through this writing for all the wrongdoings he did to his mother. You will see this thing as he says here. I became weary of her oft repeated accounts of my father's success. I was a teenager and so ever inclined to be dismissive and bitter towards anything that had to do with family and home. Often enough, my mother was the object of my derision. Look, as a teenager, he would deride his mother. And now he feels sorry. My mother was the object of derision. Suddenly, her life seemed so small to me. Life seemed so small to me. Why? Because he knew that she is developing cancer and would die very soon. You value people and things when you know they are going to miss them. He began to value the mother when he realized soon he will miss her. Suddenly her life seemed to so small to me. She was there and sometimes I thought always there as if she were confined to the four walls of house. Why confined? Because she could not walk. I would even complain about her cooking, mostly though I was getting more and more impatient with the difficulty she encountered in doing everyday things. Look, she had just come to America, she was a Korean, she didn't know English language, but this son had gone to extra the English medium school, so he spoke English, he knew English ways, American ways, but the mother didn't know. And there was a conflict that was caused by the language and education. Teaching this line, I remember, do you remember in first semester in academic writing course, you read one text by Richard Rodriguez from the Memory of Hunger. The title of the essay was The Achievement of Desire. How in that memoir, Richard Rodriguez says that as he joined English medium school and began to study and learn English language, American ways of life, there came a distance between him and his parents, the Mexican people who spoke Spanish and he spoke English and he, and he didn't like talking about his parents. He felt bad about, it, about the start of his parents and education, not only uh, education on one side brought a distance between him and his parents' cultural root, but at the same time, education also gave him a way to realize this thing. This is what Richard Rodriguez says. And as I, read, as I read these lines, I remember that essay because something similar is happening here. The reader says that there was a sort of disturbance. The relation was difficult because the mom didn't know English and the son preferred English. Read here. I was getting more and more impatient with the difficulties she encountered in doing everyday things. She would seek help and he would be angry. I was afraid for her. Why? One day we got into a terrible argument. Look, he had quarrel, terrible argument with the mother. Look, as a son, while writing this memoir, he is going back and remembering why maybe he is begging excuse through this writing. He is absolving himself from the sin 
of misbehaving with the mother. One day we got into a terrible argument when she asked me to call the bank to question a discrepancy she had discovered in the monthly statement. I asked her why she could not call herself. I was stupid and brutal and I knew exactly how to wound her. Look what he says. As a teenager, he says, I was stupid. Flashback. This is a flashback. <coughs> I was stupid. <coughs> <coughs> I was brutal and I knew <coughs> how to wound her. He misbehaved. He was cruel to her. He wounded her. And now he's writing once he has only died of cancer. <coughs> so do you see the emotional appeal? Do you see the, the, the sour relation between the mother and the son? So the whole essay revolves around this relation between the mother and son and the experience the son had with the mother. Paragraph 22. Now we have dialogue. Another remarkable thing. Up to now, we didn't have dialogue. From paragraph 22, a dialogue starts in the flashback. The writer remembers having dialogue. Whom do I talk to? She said. She would mostly speak to me in Korean and I would answer in English. This is exactly what happened to Richard Rodriguez in that essay, uh, The Achievement of Desire. Rodriguez never wanted to speak Spanish and his parents could not speak English. <coughs> Look how, how language and education brings problem. Whom do I talk to? She said she would mostly speak to me in Korean and I would answer in English. The bank manager, who else? Look how, how sharply he answers. What do I say? Whatever you want to say. See this angry conversation. Don't speak to me like that. She cried. Look, he made her cry. He made her cry. It's just that you should be able to do it yourself. I said, oh God, how rude. How rude he was. He tells his mother, do it yourself. You know how I feel about this? The mother says, well, maybe then you should consider it practice. Well, maybe then you should consider it practice. I answered lightly using the Korean word to make sure she understood. <coughs> he said you should practice English. Look, the son is forcing the mother to learn English. <coughs> <coughs> this essay is a voice from the margin. Right? And you have this voice from the margin. Who is at the margin? The mother. The mother is at the margin in this essay. How? She is a Korean who cannot speak English. Her son speaks English. And look the problem she is facing. Okay. Her face blanched and her neck suddenly became rigid as if I were throttling her. She felt so bad when the son said you must practice English. She nearly struck me right then, but instead she bit her lip and ran upstairs. She was not happy when the son said, speak English, learn English. I followed her, pleading for forgiveness at her door, but it was the one time in our life that I could not convince her, melt her resolve with the blandishments of his spoiled son. So the writer calls him, as a spoiled son. And when he says, I was a spoiled son, you can understand the values he believes in. A son should not be spoiled. So do you see, throughout the writing, he is also feeling sorry for what he had done to his mother. He goes up in the room, the mother has locked the room, she is crying inside, he knocks, she doesn't open. Paragraph 31. When my mother was feeling strong enough or was in particularly good spirits, she would roll her machine into the... Now look again. He was in the past. Now he comes to the present. Oh, let's not say present. There are... Even in the past, sometimes he talks about the distant past. He goes to the distant past. Then, even in the past, there are vista, there are, there are segments of the past. Distant past... Then he comes to the nearer past, right? Recent past. When my mother was feeling strong enough or was in particularly good spirits, she would roll her machine into the kitchen. Again, 
They imagined the machine had come in paragraph 1. It was in paragraph 1, you saw the machine in first line. And now in paragraph 31, you see the machine. Look, by repeating the machine imagery, there is unity achieved in writing. And sit at the table and watch me work. She wore pajamas day and night, mostly old pairs of mine. Very emotional. This the, uh, this, this T-shirt is about my daughter. She, she gifted me on Father's Day. And uh, I often wear the shirts and pants of my own children, right? This is how we have, we have this bond of affection, right? Uh, this is so emotional. He gave his pajamas for her to wear. Now, what things do you give to your mom, your parents to wear? Para 32. She said, I can't tell what are you making. 33. Mandu filling. Now look again, another food. So, the son was making food. And the mother who had cancer in the third stage, dying, she was sitting on the chair. And she looks him. Do you see? In the past, the mother would cook and the son would look. Now, the son is cooking and the mother is looking. Life is like that. It's a circle, right? In the past, the mother would cook and from the crooks of the hand, the son would look. Now, the son is cooking and the mother is looking. See the cycle of life. See the wheel of life. Okay. I can't tell what are you cooking, the mom says. Mandu, a Korean dish, I guess. You didn't solve the cabbage and its squash. Now look how careful the mother knows how to cook mandu. And she's very carefully observing his son making mandu. And she says that you didn't follow the procedure. You didn't solve the cabbage. See the process of cooking. This essay is remarkable for process writing. It describes detailed process making various dishes. You didn't solve the cabbage in squares. Was I supposed to? Of course. Look at, look, it's too wet. Now the skins will get soggy before you can fry them. What should I do? It's too late. Maybe I will, maybe it will be okay if you work quickly. Why didn't you ask me? Look the love of the mother. Why didn't you ask me? I could tell you how to cook. You were finally sleeping. Son says, you should have woken me. The mother says, no way. Why? Look the love between son and mother. You're sleeping. How can I disturb you? <coughs> <coughs> she, I've got cough and cold. She sighed as deeply as her weary lungs would allow. I don't know how you were going to make it without me, the mother says. I don't know either, son says. I will remember the salt next time. You... Better, uh, you better and not too much salt. We often talk like this. So what happens from paragraph 30, uh, from paragraph uh, 22, from para 22 up to paragraph 45, 22 to 45, there is a dialogue. That is recalled by the son. The, the reader remembers talking to the mother. Para 46. We often talk like this. Our tone decidedly matter of fact chin up. Just this side of being able to bear it. Once while inspecting a potato fritter batter. Another food item I was making. She asked me if she had ever done anything that I wished she had not done. This is very interesting. Oh God, as I read these lines, I remember my mother. I remember all, some of the times when I quarreled with my mother. I remember the times when I hurt my mother. I remember the times when my mother hurt me. See, here's the line. She asked me if she had ever done anything that I wished she had not done. If she had ever done Anything that I wished she had not done. The mother asked. Look how careful she was. The mother worried if she had hurt her son. I thought for a moment and told her, No, mom, you have never hurt me. In the next breath, 
she wondered aloud if it was right of her to have let me go to extra look again she says was it right to send you away to college let's say she says was it a right thing to send you away exactly similar thing happens in that story the achievement of desire i thought for a moment and told her no in the next breath she wondered aloud if it was right of her to have let me go to extra to live away from the house while i was so young so the question was he was too young and he was sent away from the house was it right or wrong look because the the question may be if you send a small young child away maybe they will learn a bad culture maybe they won't get family culture she tested the batter's thickness with her finger and called for more flour then she asked if given a choice i would go to extra again look then she asked if she said if you get a chance to go extra again will you go maybe the mom was trying to see if the son can miss the mother or not it's surprising why she asked this question then she asked if given a choice i would go to extra again another remarkable thing in this essay that i remember now while discussing this line is let's ask a question what is it in this memoir that brings the son and mother together what is this in this memoir that brings the son and mother together and the simple answer will be it is the food it is the cooking that brings the son and the mother together they come together through the cooking so if you ask a question what is the framing device what is the framing device so we can say it is a cooking that is used as a framing device to connect the whole stories about the mother and the son and the father and the sister okay let's read paragraph 47 i wasn't sure what she was getting at and i told her that i could not be certain but probably yes i would like to go i would he said if i got a chance again to go to school i would she said she snorted at this she didn't like this idea when he said yes mom i'll go back again to school leaving you missing you leaving you she didn't feel good at this and said it was my leaving home that had once so troubled our relation look she said he left home that troubled our relationship look the theme of the the, the new yorker magazine where it was published october 16 1995 was home the theme was home and the mother says he left home and i didn't feel good our relations became bad because he left home at age 15 if he had stayed with me maybe our relations will won't be sour so interesting so it was my leaving home the son says that had once so troubled our relations with the mother remember how i had so much difficulty talking to you the mother says when you came back from school look the son came from the school and when he came from the school he was quite changed he had become american he spoke english the mother was korean he spoke korean and there was a gap a distance between the mother and son because of education or you answer what was the reason of this gap para for it she believed back then that i had found her more and more ignorant each time i came home oh god this is exactly what happens in the essay the achievement of desire by richard rodriguez each time rodriguez comes home and sees his parents he feels very bad he sees a difference distance between him and his parents because he is learning english he speaks english like native americans and his parents don't know anything about english so something similar is happening so the question arises what is the function of education should education create a gap between family members or should education bring them together I, I, this thing occurs to me read read here she believed back then that i had found her more and more ignorant look this is how the mother felt the mother thought that each time the son came home the son thought 
that the mother is ignorant. But the mother was not ignorant. She was an accountant. She was a national player. She was a cook. She was a very talented lady. But somehow she felt that her son thinks she is ignorant woman. This time I came home. She said she never blamed me for this perspective. For this was the way she knew it would be with my wonderful new education. Look. She says that it's not your fault. It is the fault of your education, American education. She wanted him to be educated and become like his husband, the doctor, the father. But at the same time, she, she also felt that her son had changed in a negative way because of education. Nothing I could say seemed to quell the notion. He tried to convince her that no, there is nothing wrong with education. But she, she, she never agreed. But I knew that the problem wasn't simply the education. The first time I saw her again after starting school, barely six weeks later, when she and my father visited me on parents day, she had already grown nervous and distant. Look, just after six weeks, just after, just after six weeks of missing her son, the parents, the father and mother came to his college or his school to meet him. And how did she feel? She felt nervous and distant. So do you see the bond between the son and mother? This is the reason why Changri Li decided to write about the mother in this memoir. <coughs> we all have strong attachment with some members of the family and mostly it's the mother. Okay. After the usual campus events, we had gone to the motel where they were staying in a nearby town and sat on the beds in our room. She seemed to sneak looks at me. Look, how do you sneak look? Look at someone, you look at someone without letting them know that you are looking at them. She seemed to sneak looks at me as though I might discover a horrible new truth if our eyes should meet. What was this horrible new truth? Maybe possibly the son was getting the new American education and the mother was anxious about what will be the result of this new education. So mother had already started distrusting his son who was getting the new American education. Or you decide what was this reason of the horrible look. Okay. She seemed to sneak looks at me as though I might discover a horrible new truth if our eyes should meet. Para 49. My own secret feeling was that I had missed my parents greatly. Within six weeks, he felt that he had missed his parents badly. My mother especially and much more than I had anticipated. So you see the relation between mother and son. I could not tell them that these first weeks were a mere blur to me that I felt completely overwhelmed by all the studies and my much brighter friends and the thousand irritating details of living alone. Look, look, the, the, the theme of this magazine was home that month. The essay title is coming home again. And at this point in paragraph 49, he says that it was irritating it was irritating to live alone. And New Yorker is a magazine read by the people of New York, the metropolitan city. And we, we know, we can easily guess that most people in the cities might be living alone. So do you see the readers? Most of the readers of this memoir who read this memoir in the magazine back then 1995, they were living alone. And here, somebody living alone shares his experience of living alone away from home. And argues that it's always better to live with the family than living alone. This is an argument you can find out as you finish reading. <clears throat> the thousand irritating details of living alone and that I had really learned nothing save perhaps how to put on a necktie while springing, sprinting to class, I felt 
as if I had plunged too deep into the world, which to my great horror was much larger than I had ever imagined. As a child in school, when he was when he left home for the first time and when he was living alone on his own in the hostel or in the college, perhaps he felt irritating and he felt as if he was a child thrown into the ocean. So this paragraph 49, which focuses on the impact of living alone, is important because the theme of the title the essay is coming home again, and the theme of the magazine when it was published, that issue was home again. Okay, paragraph 50. I welcomed the lull of the mortal room. My father and I had nearly dozed off when my mother lumped up excitedly, murmured how stupid she was and hurried to the closet by the door. She pulled out our old metal cooler and dragged it between the beds. She Look, the, the mother had taken food in a cooler all the way from home to the hostel because she knew that her son would be missing the food. Do you see, most of the food was Korean. Some of it was American. And you see, the food also functions as a, as a link between the Korean culture and the American culture. It is through the foods, the Korean food, the writer, the people are connected to the roots of their culture the home culture. Okay, she pulled out our old metal cooler and dragged it between the beds. She lifted the top and began unpacking plastic containers and I thought she would never stop. One after the other, they came out, each with a dish and traveled well, a salted, look, what she had brought? A salted stew, meat, one. Rolls of Korean style sushi, two. I opened a container of reddish kimchi, three, and suddenly the room bloomed with its smell, and I reveled in the very peculiar sensation which perhaps only true kimchi lovers know of simultaneously drooling, water coming from mouth, and gagging as I breathed it all in. For the next few minutes, they watched me eat. I am not certain that I was even hungry, but after weeks of pork, Parmigiana. After eating pork parmigiana in the school, the American dish, he got the Korean dish. And chicken patties, American dish. And wax bean, American dish. He had been eating pork parmigiana, chicken patties, and wax beans for the six weeks in the school. And mom brought the Korean dish. Do you see this, this comparison between the Korean food and the, the American food and the writer like the Korean food? I suddenly realized that I had lost all this sabor in my life, oh God. He thought he had lost all the taste in life because he left home and miss, was missing the food, missing the kitchen. And I seemed, and it seemed I could not get enough of it back. He was eating like, like anything. I ate and ate so much and so fast that I actually went to the bathroom and vomited. I came out dizzy and sat it with the phantom warmth of my binge. He had too much. Look how much he was missing home. Para 51. So this paragraph is remarkable for the attachment between the mom and, mom and son and the mother comes to visit him in school and she brings a lot of foods for him. Para 51. And beneath the face of her worry, I thought my mother was smiling. On the face, she was looking worried. But beneath the, below the face, he thought she was smiling. Para 52. From that day, my mother prepared a certain meal to welcome me home each time I went. Every time he went home, she made a special meal to welcome him. It was Korean meal. I, it was always the same, even as I rode the school's shuttle bus from Exeter to Logan Airport. I could, not, I could already see the exact arrangement of my mother's table. Here we have, an, we have a hint that Exeter school must have been far away because he says he had to take an aeroplane journey. He had to travel through aeroplane to reach home from Logan Airport to his hometown. Okay. I could already see the exact arrangement of my mother's table. I could smell the food before I came home. Look. So at the center, 
of this whole memoir is food. It is the food that brings all these strands together. Okay. Para 53. I knew that we would eat in the kitchen. She would focus how the language would conditional. The conditional would is used to talk about you use would to talk about discontinued past. And this is a memoir that talks about a past that is no more. <coughs> I knew that we would eat in the kitchen, the table brimming with plates. There was the kalbi, of course, broiled or grilled, depending on the season, left leaf lettuce to wrap the meat with Bowls of garlicky clam broth. Look again, the food items. Broiled or grilled, uh, uh, kalbi, broiled or grilled. Leaf lettuce, garlicky clam broth with miso and tofu and spinach. See the vegetables. Shavings of cod, dusted in flour and then dipped in egg wash and fried. Glass, these were the food items his mother prepared whenever he came home. Glass noodles with onions and, and sitake, scallion and hot paper pancake, chilled steamed shrimp, seasoned salads of bean, sprouts, spinach and white radish, crispy squares of seaweed, steamed rice with, 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 barely, with barley and red bean, homemade kimchi. It was all there when he, when he came home. The old flavors I knew, the beautiful salt, the sweet, the excellent taste. So para 53 is very remarkable for the description, for the naming of the various dishes that his mother made for him every time he came home. Okay, para 54. After the meal, my, ma my father and I talked about this school. Again, flashback past. They are at home in the past. In the, he is remembering. He came home. After the meal, my mother, my father and, and, and I talked about school. But I could never say enough for it to make any sense. My father would often recall his high school principal who had gone to England to study the methods and traditions of the public schools and regaled students with stories of the great Eton man, a man from Eton College. My mother sat with us, paring fruit, not saying a word, but taking everything in. Listen carefully. When it was time to go to bed, my father said, good night first. I usually watched television until the early morning. My mother would sit with me for an hour. <coughs> 